time for the 2001 Mastercraft Pro Water Ski Tour. Today from Indianapolis, Indiana, it is the 180 Energy Drink Indy Pro Classic. And we have got some glassy, calm water for some of the best lady slalom skiers in the entire world today, including the Aussie, who is atop the leaderboard when it comes to the Inmar Pro Tour standings, Emma Shears. Warming up, stretching out, getting set in the back. She is tied for the tour title right now. Christy Overton Johnson, the other name atop that leaderboard. Natalie Hamrick in the mix. Jill Knutson as well. All here in Indianapolis set to do battle. Christy Overton Johnson, maybe some final tips over the telephone before she hits the water today. We mentioned fourth on the tour right now, Jill Knutson. She is set to go. You'll see her in just moments, but we've had some other competitors on the water today, including longtime veteran slalomer Jennifer Leachman. And it was good to see Jennifer on the course again. You know, she shattered her left ankle back in 98. We haven't seen her much. On this pass, she managed two buoys at 38 off, but that was it. Good to see her back on the water, though. And then Karen Trulip came out also at 38 off. Now, she's had a tough season so far this year, not skiing up to her normal potential. She came around one, looked like she had this great lean going, and then the tip came up high on two, almost looked like it caught the rope, and out the back she goes. And she ended up with a score of one and a half at 38 off. Lori Kruger, who's been uh, training and living outside of Houston, also at 38 off, had that tip come up. No turn at all that she could work with out of number one. And she ends up with a score of one at 38 off. So everybody was getting bunched up right around the first part of 38 off. April Coble, same kind of thing. Coming through the course, good reach, broke at the waist, two buoys. And April Coble finishes with two at 38 off. So Coble is finished as we stand right now with four ladies down. Coble and Jennifer Leachman tied two at 38 off. Much more to come, though, from Indianapolis, Indiana. The water still calm, the ladies still ready. So the 2001 Mastercraft Pro Water Ski Tour, it is brought to you by 180 Energy Drink. Turn your energy around. Also by Mastercraft, the leader, and pulling farther ahead. When we come back, Natalie Hamrick. Stick around. What do we call 33 years of world record poles? Just warm it up. Introducing the all-new ProStar 190 EBO from Mastercraft. The Compact Presario 800T with Intel Pentium 3 processor. Starting at $1499. Incredibly good looking. Incredibly thin. And incredibly light. How light? Pretty light. Call 1-888-331-5711 toll free and get a $50 instant rebate off any Presario notebook with Intel processor. If you wake up sore, stiff, with back, neck, or shoulder pain, wishing for a great night's sleep, call for this free Better Sleep and Gift Catalog, featuring three free fabulous gifts. Choose a free camcorder, free digital camera, or free DVD player, free with purchase of any Craftmatic Monaco adjustable bed. To receive your free Better Sleep and Gift Catalog with free information on the adjustable bed that costs 50% less than many quality flatbeds, call now. Call toll-free 1-800-344-8300. That's 1-800-344-8300. Now get the Wall Street Journal delivered for eight weeks at just 38 cents a day of 50% savings. Call 800-454-6500. That's 800-454-6500 for the Wall Street Journal. The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series heads to Nashville Super Speedway, where Jack Sprague looks to hold on to his new spot on top of the leaderboard. Hey, we're all around. We're all around. The Federated Auto Parts 200, 8 Eastern, Friday night on ESPN. Welcome back to the 180 Energy Drink Indy Pro Classic. Doug Dunbar and the coach, Dave Benzel, on the water. Natalie Hamrick choosing to, I guess, pretty much warm up at 28 off. Right, when we say off, off Dave, now, we're talking about Hamrick. off of a standard 75-foot rope. So in American water skiing, we're always referring to the rope length as some amount of rope off of the 75-foot line. 28 off is really a 47-foot rope, but we never talk that way. So here's Natalie. Skiers get the option of starting with uh, a rope as long as this, but no longer on the women's side. And, uh, this is at the professional level. If you were in a recreational tournament or a novice tournament, you could start even with a longer line. In fact, you could start with a 75-foot line. Here's 
Madison Natalie, 22 years old, in her trademark bikini, using the 28 off to sort of get her rhythm going, to feel the pull behind the boat. Mary Gail Holcomb oh, pulling oh. some more rope into the boat. Now we're going from 28 off to 32 off. So four more feet has been pulled into the, the boat and laid on the floor. Rope is reattached. And now she's set. Emma Shear standing by. You know, skiers like Emma can learn a bit from watching their competitors who are out ahead of them. They're watching to see the setup and what if there's any wind, what you know, what uh, factor does that play? Here's 32 off. Natalie Hamrick so smooth. She told me that she's more focused and more dedicated to her skiing than ever before this year, and that it's really paid off. And look how easy she makes this pass look, even though the rope is four feet shorter. She just is dialed in now. The setups on this lake are shorter than most of the sites the skiers see at. This lake is only about 1,700 feet long, which means that it's very short setup time. And then you get into your rhythm, and of course, the, the course is a standard length. That's the same wherever you go. Nice reach, so patient at the buoy, and you'll notice that she's keeping the line tight all the way through this pass. Those six buoys mean that she earns the right to shorten the rope three more feet. But Natalie okay, has gotten Natalie. through the early line lengths quite nicely. 28 off, 32 off now. Time for 35 off, and she'll try and dig into 38 after this pass. Here's the setup that we talked about. Boats coming around, lining up with the course, accelerates up to 34 miles an hour. Quick pull out, and she wants to get wide enough here so she can create the angle to be wide enough right there at one ball. And it looked like a nice start. She's just about six foot tall, and that helps her here in slalom. And you'll notice that she's also pretty good at bending her knees. Sometimes skiers who are real tall are not as good at bending their knees. She's got a little bit of both going for her there and runs the pass 35 off. And I have to say, she ran this almost as if the rope hadn't been shortened. She didn't make it look that much more difficult. Holds on long with two hands and gets out wide of the buoy. She's literally trying to ski the course wider than it is. And if you have that in your mind, then you tend to ski wider and it makes the course easier. Great body position through that whole pass. Here's 38 off now. We've taken three more feet of rope off. The rope is very short here. Good start. She's on her way over to two. Another good reach. She's got this going. Good pull over to four. Is she going to make it? Natalie Hamrick struggles to get around six ball. Doesn't quite make it, but five on the day at 38 off. That's deeper than anybody else has gotten so far. And testament to her will and her body position against the boat. This pass is a case of five ball itis. By that I mean it was a done deal. She was in great shape. 38 off is a pass where it, it isn't going to be necessarily perfect, but because of her, her, her technique and her style, she's running this thing. She's coming over here to four ball, and she's in great shape. She leaves it in great shape, but when she gets to five, she folds. She breaks at the waist, and no matter how hard she pulls, she can't make it. Well, despite the struggle to try and get around six ball, she is the leader so far, and she's with Dave Benzel. Natalie, your performances this season have been so consistent. Your points are way up there. To what do you attribute this success? Well, I definitely trained harder than I ever have before this winter. You know, I, from the time that America's Cup ended last October until the start of the Pro Tour in March, I guess it was, I've just been on the water, off the water, full time, full blast, you know. Really, really going for it. Just really committed to your scheme more than yeah, ever before? And, you know, it's getting to the point now where I'm coming to these tournaments and I'm trying to enjoy them for what they are. And the city that we're in, like, we've had a great time in Indianapolis. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying not to put so much pressure on myself, and I think that's helping a lot, too. Good job. Let's Thank see how you. that score holds up. I hope it holds up. Got my fingers crossed. <laughs> Keep our fingers crossed for you. The leader at 5 and 38 off, Jennifer Leachman, April Koble tied for second. Now time for Ronnie Barton. Old technology versus what's new on the market. In the last few years, the slalom ski industry has really seen a shift in trend from traditional skis to shape skis. Shape skis are easier to get up on, they're easier to ride for longer periods of time, and the width in the forebody allows for great stability in the turns, perfect for beginner-level slalom skiers. But the pros are always looking for a way to get more stability in the turns as well. But what they found was they couldn't ride a ski this wide in the course at speeds faster than 34 miles an hour. Voila, the HOASX. 
It's still wider in the forebody than the traditional slalom ski, but the difference lies in the tail. It's almost as narrow as your traditional level slalom ski, making acceleration and weight crossings really easy. Great for those pros who are trying to get across the course at 36 miles an hour and have time to make those turns. This is currently the most technologically advanced ski on the market, and the pros feel that skis like this will be the ones that they'll be riding in the future. Thank you, Ronnie. When we come back to Indianapolis, three skiers to go, including Aussie Emma Shears, who admits that once she gets on the H2O, it is all about business. I don't think my intensity really comes out until I hit the water. When I hit the water, I'm very focused on what i got to do, and, and each buoy is one more closer to what I think I should be doing. So I just look at it like that. Here's your chance to win a trip to Hawaii and walk in the footsteps of heroes. Because now all Dish Network customers who order the HBO package by September 30th are automatically entered into HBO's Join the Troops sweepstakes. Grand prize includes a fabulous six-day trip for two to Hawaii, plus tickets to Pearl Harbor. Order HBO now, and you'll catch Band of Brothers, the biggest television event of 2001. Call to order HBO now or order online at www.dishnetwork.com. Your chance to win a trip to Hawaii and other great prizes is right at your fingertips. Stars number one in new hit movies. Stars number one in new hit movies. Movies you'll see first on Stars and only on Stars. the NFL preseason on ESPN. Still shaken by the death of Corey Stringer. We have lost a brother, a teammate, and a friend. The Vikings are looking to get back to the NFC Championship game and beyond. Dante Culpepper and Randy Moss must open their preseason against Ricky Williams, Aaron Brooks, and the much-improved New Orleans Saints. It's a rematch of last year's NFC Divisional Playoffs. Viking Saints, 8 p.m. Saturday on ESPN. We're back in Indianapolis, Indiana, the 180 Energy Drink Indy Pro Classic. To the water we go. Aussie Emma Shears gets underway, 28 off, essentially a warm-up pass. 27-year-old skier has a bit more experience than Natalie Hamrick and a slightly different style. But think about this sport, water skiing, where you come off the dock and you're right into your performance. She runs 28 off without any practice. There's no warm-ups. You come off the dock and you perform. If she fell right there at the first buoy, the party's over. Pack your ski, you're going home. So this is very demanding mentally as well as physically, and it's why a skier would elect to start at, for instance, 28 off rather than coming off the dock at, say, 38 off. So maybe this is called practice, and she runs it smoothly, getting her rhythm established and getting set up for now a more difficult pass. Here's 32 off for Emma Shears. Oh, great one. She gets away from it cleanly and quickly, keeping her speed up around the buoy so she doesn't get bogged down. Good shape at four ball. Coming through the wakes in pretty good shape. And you'll see her advance her hips and ski right through the second wake. Six more. She's on her way. Looking good here. Emma doesn't have the height of Natalie Hamrick, but she's very strong. And her experience has taught her how to run the course even if she gets late. And we might see that in the next pass. You'll see how patient she becomes when she's running late. Here she's running early, ahead of the ball, literally waiting for the buoy on each side of the course. Three more feet of rope has been pulled into the boat. This is 35 off. Now work gets tougher. Great pull away from number one ball. Handles in. She's off over here to three. Great shape. Oh, look at this. Another excellent 35 off pass, much like the pass that we saw Natalie Hamrick run. Emma keeps her handle in very close here right before the gate, lets it out only slightly to turn the ski under the rope, and then gets on her way across the course for the number one turn. And another nice turn here. You can see how well she's managing the rope so that we don't have slack in it. Dipping a little low there, but not a problem. 
Emma Shear is really showing that she has mastered 35 off. Water conditions smooth, making it very nice. The tip is coming up on her there at the fifth buoy, whereas at the third buoy, the same turn on the other on that side, it dipped in and bit kind of hard. So not every turn exactly the same. 38 off. Here's the money pass. No one has run it yet. Turn around one, dipping in very low. She's around two. Oh, but cannot hang on to the angle that she had at the second buoy. She turned it so sharp that she couldn't hold it. And the boat wins the battle. Let's watch to see what happens here. Same kind of start, arms in, arms out. Now the rotation, and you'll see her come off of number one in pretty good shape. But when she gets the two, she can't manage the rope. Well, Emma certainly not skiing her very best, and that's going to come into play in the Inmar Tour standings right now, and it's also going to come into play today. She's currently in a three-way tie for second. Emma, several of the skiers have said that it's a tough end to get started on that 38 off down because of the short setup. Is that what you found? Yeah, and I just found it felt like a little bit shorter today. I wasn't getting around as well in the turn, so... It was a little bit difficult and I was a bit disappointed. A little bit rollier today too, because there's no breeze. So just a little bit annoyed and as myself, just turned too hard. I should have waited, been a bit more patient, but it's the way it goes. Everybody's bunched up around the second buoy, except for Natalie who poked one way out there. Yeah, she did very well. She skied awesome today and she deserves everything she did out there. It's, it's a little bit tough, but um, you know, it's gonna take some beating that score definitely today. I think she's gonna have it. Do you think anyone should start 38 from the other end of the lake? Um, Jill did it yesterday, and she's the one who had the better score yesterday, so I think that definitely that's a, it's a good idea and, and uh, seems like would be the way to go. But um, I was more confident just doing what I did today and didn't pay off for slack. So far, nobody's been able to touch our leader, Natalie Hamrick. Five and 38 off the best on the day, but two skiers to go, and they can get the job done, including the co-leader in the Inmar Tour right now, Christy Overton-Johnson. She'll hit the water when we come right back. This CD RXDI is running great. How about a splash of gas and I'm out of here? Have you got any kings? Go fish. Hey, are you still mad because we didn't let you drive? Come on, Jimmy, it's my turn to drive. Ah, oh, I'm seeing you drive. Right on the back, right on the back. It's my turn to drive. That's where you belong, on the back. I want to drive the boat. Chili's Booty Back Ribs, double basted with barbecue sauce. Sometimes you just need to brush. Big time. That's why there's Trident Gum. Chewing Trident after eating helps fight cavities. Can't brush? Chew on this. Sports Century Friday. He put the roar in the Roaring Twenty. Jack Dempsey, from barroom brawler to heavyweight champ. He was a wrecking ball. The fight people still talk about. What remains today is the controversy of the long count. And his infamous fan. Capone sent a note to Dempsey. I'm going to make sure that you get a fair shake. Jack Dempsey, Sports Century, the top 50 and beyond. 8 p.m. Friday, only on ESPN Classic. To get ESPN Classic, call 1-800-CLASSIC today. Welcome back to the calm waters of Indianapolis, Indiana. The 180 Energy Drink Indy Pro Classic. Always a pleasure to see one of the greatest slalomers ever on the ladies' side, Christy Overton Johnson. Her warm up at 28 off. Doug, it's really a pleasure to see her on the water today because I wasn't sure she was going to compete. I ran into her in the hotel this morning at breakfast, and she took a very tough crash in the preliminary round uh, yesterday and almost did not compete today because she really got her bell rung and she had some second thoughts about going out on the water today. She wasn't feeling 100%. Natalie Hamrick watching this, uh, knowing that with Christy on the water, her lead is in jeopardy. Christy wondering whether or not she should skip the next pass. That's a no now, Christy. Hot, 35. All right, Mary Gill asking, she says, I need to know now, are you going to run 32 or skip it and go to 35? And Christy has decided to 
what's called opting up. She's taking the okay. option of skipping 32 off, going directly to 35. Now, here's the risk. If she misses all of this pass, and she were to score three or four, her score is at 32 off. 35 off. It's all on the line here. Good start. Oh, look how low she's keeping the handle. She looks in total control here. Nice. At five. Over to six. And the gamble, at least to this point, has paid off. She runs 35 off. Now, what has she done? She's conserved some energy, for one thing. She doesn't have to run that extra pass that the others have run. And she probably is trying to set herself up to run 38 off from the opposite end of the lake because it's a longer setup. Strategy at work here. Christy saying to me earlier, she's really not 100% today, but you wouldn't know it watching this pass. As people watch Christy, they often marvel at the fact that she turns the ski equally well on both sides of the course. Well, there's our leader and Natalie Hamrick wondering, well, this next pass is going to tell it all. She has five buoys at 38 off. Christy about to attack 38 off right here. Good start. Again, she hangs on so long to the handle, getting out wide, even though the rope is shorter than the width of the course. She's round four, headed for five. In great shape, she's going to run it. Overton Johnson runs the 38 off, and that is not good news for Natalie Hamrick. A lot of disappointment there. One ball shy, and Overton will give her shot now at 39 off. Well, I'm sure Natalie is thinking to herself, if Chrissy's not 100%, I sure don't want to see her when she is 100%. Natalie's so hungry for that win. Christy coming through with just a great performance. Her strategy paying off, running all six buoys here. And you can see how well she's cranking the ski around both sides of the course and staying tough through the wakes. So 39 and a half off comes next. A foot and a half more rope pulled into the boat. Well, she can't let up on the pressure now. One skier to go after Christy Overton Johnson. This 39 and a half off, and she can't make the two balls. So one at 39 and a half. That is the mark now for Jill Knudsen. So Christy Overton Johnson leads right now. One at 39 and a half. Natalie Hamrick second. Emma Shears is on the bubble as we speak with one skier to go here in Indianapolis. Christy Overton Johnson accolades from the crowd always appreciative of the great effort Jill Knudsen getting set her ski is on we'll be back to do battle in Indy in just a moment what do we call 33 years of world record polls just warm it up introducing the all-new ProStar 190 EBO from Mastercraft Taking care of skin means watching out for scars. So reach for Neosporin to help prevent infection and minimize the appearance of scars. Healthy looking skin is beautiful skin. Use Neosporin every cut, every time. Williams was arrested on the suspicion of murdering six rail workers. of Mars. Rated R. Opens August 24th. Funny car champion John Force and RPM Tonight's John Kernan teach little Kenny to slow down and learn. A true motorsports fan watches RPM Tonight for all the details. That a boy, Kenny. Remember, to know is to love. The 2001 Mastercraft Pro Water Ski Tour is brought to you by Water Ski Magazine, the world's leading water ski publication. Also by Mastercraft, the leader in pulling farther ahead. Hoping to pull farther ahead now, Jill Knudsen. She is set to go. The leader right now, Christy Overton Johnson, one ball at 39 and a half. How is she feeling right now? Christy, we spoke earlier this morning. You weren't sure. Could you ski? Could you not ski? And you kind of assess the situation. And then you go out and beat the leader. What a great score. Yeah, that was the best score I've had all year. And yesterday skied fine and then just ate it and suffered the concussion. And 
knew out there I shouldn't be out there, but just went out and tried to relax and ski, and and I didn't want to hurt myself at Tuval. I thought about throwing it, and then figured my son would rather have a coherent mom the rest of his life. <laughs> well, let's see how that score holds up. Now we got one competitor to go. Yeah, it might be a runoff, so I'm not gonna get too dry yet. <laughs> Uh, Christy will leave the life jacket on. We'll watch Jill Knutson, final skier on the day. This is 32 off. Interesting strategy for Jill. She's starting at 32 off instead of 28 off because she wants to run 38 off from the same direction on the lake that Christy did. She's just getting there a different way. Instead of opting up and, and skipping the 32 off, she's just going to skip 28. Now that means, and uh, there's Christy standing by, thinking, well, uh, good performance. Will it hold up? She knows that Jill has been very hungry for a win. Although she certainly can't feel bad about how she skied no matter what happens. 35 off now for Jill Knudsen. We're going to watch this right foot forward skier, especially on 135 right there. Sometimes she drops her head into the turn, and that can cause a problem. Good shape here. And another good pass. By starting at 32 off, some skiers would find that a difficult pass to start at. Uh, it's, it's not a warm-up pass. She's got to go to work right away. So there's some risk connected with that. But she has the increments closer together. From 32 to 35 off is only a three-foot rope length difference. This skier is another one who has gotten better with age and maturity. Let's run it. You hear Al Rucker saying, let's run it. A little encouragement from the boat crew. This will be 38 off now for Jill Knudsen. Running it from the same end of the lake as Christy. She likes a little bit longer setup on that end. Here comes the gate. Good reach, good start. She's on her way. The rhythm is set. Over here for three. Another good turn. Oh, running down course on four. She's going to be fast into five, having to wait for the rope. Oh, no. And Dave, if anybody knows, as you mentioned throughout this show, how that feels, Christy Overton Johnson certainly does with her problems in qualifying. Jill Knutson doesn't make six ball. Well, that certainly means that Christy's going to win this thing only because of the misfortunes of Jill Knutson today. Oh, this is a brutal crash, and it all started back there at four ball where the handle came up under her chin. Now she's late and fast here, and she has no angle. Look how she's digging hard, digging hard, and the front half of her body gets ahead of the lower part of her body, and it's out the front. Good news, Jill Knutson is okay. She'll get back on the sea, do get the ride in. And Dave Benzel now talks to our winner here in Indy. Christy, congratulations. When we think about this morning and, and sort of the ambiguity that you felt about, should I ski, should I not ski, and you come away with a victory. That must be feel just great. Well, that was one of the deciding factors this morning. Usually when you feel your worst and you know all odds are against you, you usually do your best because you just go out and no one expects anything from you and just enjoy skiing. And that's what I tried to do today. And Six ball is a little frightened, especially like Jill just did. I didn't want to take another hit, and she scared me a little bit <laughs> out there. But, you know, the, she's skiing great. All the girls are skiing so well, and I'm just so thankful that I'm back to par again. Well, your skiing has really stepped back up again to where it used to be. I mean, we can see a change in it, and obviously your mental state is better. Yeah, I'm just so much more mentally confident when I'm out there. Last week in Detroit, taking that win again in the tough conditions and trusting in my ski and knowing that, it's going to be okay. I can go out there and turn, and the ski's going to hold. And that's between that and the confidence, that's been the difference. Congratulations. Thank you. And even bigger congratulations to the Inmar Tour points. The tie has been broken with the win here in Indianapolis. Christy Overton Johnson takes sole possession of first place midpoint of the season. Way to go for Overton Johnson, who also has the 180 energy drink move of the day. Well, this one buoy at 39 and a half off sealed the victory, but in a sense, it was the pass before this, running a full six at 38 off, that put everybody else on shore and out of business. Christy will think back and say, wow, what a decision I made this morning to, to go ahead and ski when I didn't really feel like it. And it was a, you know, it was a tentative decision and one that really paid off. Great day for all here in Indianapolis. For the coach, Dave Benzel, I'm Doug Dunbar. We thank you very much for watching. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Recognized as the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For now, so long from Indianapolis.
for some wakeboarding. Mastercraft Pro Wakeboard Tour rolls into High Point, North Carolina. Pine trees and all. Welcome, everyone. Doug Dunbar along with Todd Weatherill. And speaking of weather, if you will, choppy conditions on the water right now. Darren Shapiro sitting down assessing the situation. Darren uh, won the first two tour Who's stops. The best wakeboarder? Yeah. Oh, it's it's Eddie asking the young man. Who's the best yeah. wakeboarder? Right. Parks Bonifay, the selection of the day. Well, that's terrific. You'll see Parks coming up in just a little bit. Uh, as we said, coming into this tour stop, Darren Shapiro really the man to beat, but the lead dwindling a little bit in the Inmar Tour standings. Parks mounting a bit, a bit of a challenge so far. Ryan Wynn first off the dock for us today. Ryan having a real solid year, actually doing his training now in Florida with Terry Hamilton's family. Ryan takes a shot at the first obstacle on course. We'll see the rest of his run in a second. The boat will go down and make the turn for the official first pass. The way we work this, execution, intensity, composition. How well they put the runs together, how big do they take them, and just how intense are they behind the boat. Those are the elements judges are looking for. Here's pass one of two for Ryan Wynn. Starts off with a huge 9-1-1. The judges are looking not only for intensity, but also how they're landing these tricks. There's an elephant. Elephant is a front roll with a half twist at the end. Obi Dick followed up, doing pretty well so far. Solid run, very technical. Good handle pass there. Ryan Wynn will set the benchmark for the rest of the field. Quite the field we have. Again, the Inmar Tour standings. Everybody's always racing for the points and a win over the kicker. Great job. Kicker, he did a tantrum coming back the other way. Of course, he does the half cab roll to finish off that first pass. That was pretty good for Ryan. Now, if you watch as he coming in here, he's got a real strong pull into the wake. He gets a really high 9-1-1 coming back the other direction, doing a great job. There you get a good look at the Moby Dick coming off. He cases the second wake just a little bit. I think the judges might count him down. He just pulled uh, right before that kicker, pulled a tail grab just so he could line up for that. So the first pass, Wynn uses two of the four obstacles on course, mixes that with some great tricks, and opens with a nice whirly bird on pass two. Tell you what, he's gonna have to step up the intensity just a little bit on this. The judges are looking for him to go huge. There's the roll to blind, a very big maneuver. That thing's gotta get him well. He lines up well for the slaughter box, goes to the top pipe, just gets a rail slide on that, surviving the experience. That slaughter box will be torn up later by Parks Bonifay in recent tour stops. He has been nailing that thing. They're over the big ramp, so win using all four obstacles on course, mixing it up with some great tricks. That'll help him off the ramp there, kind of missing the grab on the tail, but he did a great job using all the obstacles. The judges are gonna be stoked on that. You see a good look at the whirly, well out into the flats. The judges are also looking for that intensity. Watch him here as he cuts up the ramp. He gets the top and oh, he misses the tail grab. The judges will be looking for that too. Two passes down, now comes the double up. Boat has turned 180 degrees, wakes converge, looking for big air and just shy of big air. Just gets the pop, kind of missed that one, but he did get the stall. He did tickle the front of that board, so I think they'll credit him with some sort of a grab on that. Ryan Wynn, our first competitor here in High Point, 63-22. That puts him on the board. Mark DeBeat. The 2001 Mastercraft Pro Wakeboard Tour is brought to you by 180 Energy Drink. Turn your energy around. Also by Mastercraft, the leader, and pulling farther ahead. The big question on the minds of all the fans today, will Parks throw the 180 over the wake? Well, you know, I was thinking about throwing that, or not in my run, but coming into the dock if I stand up. But, uh, you know, this morning I had a good breakfast, so I'm just feeling good. I think I might go for it today. I might even grab it. Okay, not many people doing the dreaded 180 on the Pro Tour. Do you think you can handle that kind of pressure? Well, I don't know. The wind's picking up a little bit. We got a lot of reverb rollers off the back, and there's a lot of sliders in the way. So, you know, you could come right out of that 180 and easily just slip around, and before you know it, you're at the bottom of the slider, and that's just something I don't want to get the, my scenario into. Parks Bonifay, going where no other rider has gone before. You really only need two things to live. Water and air. X Series by Mastercraft. Breathe the big air. Chili's baby back ribs, double basted with barbecue sauce. 
most dangerous prisoner ever. Looks like you're coming with me now. I ain't going back. He's about to come face to face with the most deadly force ever imagined. Whatever used to live here, we woke it up. On August 24th, the only thing that matters... We need you. ...is survival. Time to stay alive. <laughs> John Carpenter's Ghosts of Mars. Damn, girl, I like you already. Rated R. Paintings everywhere, August 24th. Is not having your high school diploma keeping you from making the money you want? With Professional Career Development Institute, you can earn your high school diploma at home without ever setting foot inside a classroom. And best of all, you can study at your own pace. Go as fast or as slow as you want. Earning your high school diploma is just one of the many career training opportunities PCDI offers. Listen to these other exciting courses to choose from. Get your career diploma in medical transcription, paralegal, medical claims billing, bookkeeping, accounting, child daycare, computer training, private investigator, interior decorating, veterinary assistant, bridal consultant, medical dental office assistant, electrician, pharmacy technician, high school diploma, or get your associate degree in paralegal, accounting, business management, or criminal justice. Your future starts with a simple phone call, so call today for free career training literature. Call 1-800-652-0101 for free literature on the one course of your choice. Welcome back to High Point, where Froggy Sullivan enjoys a little off-road skateboarding. Todd Weatherill standing by with info you need to know in case you get a little heel bruise along the way with your riding. Todd? So you've been wakeboarding a while and you're starting to get some pretty good air. Unfortunately, that means you're going to end up with heel dings and bruised feet. Well, manufacturers today are doing all kinds of things to help you with that problem. Number one, they're making better foot pads, a little bit more ergonomic, if you will, cup to the feet, right into through the arch and up into the toes. But in the heel, they're actually using some really cool things. They're putting like a donut back here. In fact, Hyperlite's got one called the Sorbothane heel. Sorbothane's pretty tough to understand, so I'm going to break it down for you. Sore, of course. Your heel gets sore. Bo, even your friend's heels are sore. Faye, they didn't know what to do, so they put more padding into the back part. And knee has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. But sorbothane knee breaks down to sorbothane, and sorbothane is good for your heels. And all this time, you thought Dr. Demento was here. Mr. Weatherill, thank you for the insight. We go back to the water. Park Spanafe coming off a win in Indianapolis, his first of the season, now kind of giving that little jab to Darren Shapiro, who started the season 2-0. and He sure is. Darren has been so strong. But I got to tell you, Park Spanafe had trouble with his shoulder at the beginning of the year, and I think he's worked all that out. We should see a healthy Parks on the water, get a good look at a front side slide right there on the nice little slide ramp. Bonifay comes at you now, pass one of two. Ryan win the leader at 63.22 points. That's the mark to beat. Pops it blind, starts out good with a blindside slide, and then also lands that. There's the 270. Parks Bonifay getting pretty good so far out into the flats. You see he got kind of off axis there, so he came back in and pulled an air roll just to have some fun and get ready for what appears to be the slaughter box. He gets the transfer and a 360 off the end. Parks Bonifay's off to an awesome start. Great tricks, combining that with great launches off these obstacles there, the kicker. So three obstacles in the first pass. Gets the grab off the kicker, Pete Rose. He missed the grab on that, if you notice really close, and he ends it off with a roll to blind. What an excellent first pass for Parks Bonifay. Notice him here coming up, the kicker. He gets a nice little grab, but look at the distance that he gets. A good 20 to 30 feet. The judges are looking for that intensity. Coming back the other way, an unbelievable-looking Pete Rose. He did a great job there, but he did miss the grab. Pass number two now. Any more obstacles for Bonifay? We'll find out. Big bat wing out into the flats, almost getting onto that kicker time. I tell you, these guys have to look out for those obstacles. So the young man who's dealt with his uh, health issues over the last few months is really coming around, looks to be feeling healthy, attacks the slaughter box again and rips it up. Man, Doug, I tell you, the judges like when they transfer from the lower case to the upper case on that slaughter box. He barely had time to go into a Rayleigh, and he even got the grab on. That's looking pretty good. That was almost like a hoochie off the ramp. So a la Ryan, a win of sorts. Uh, Parks uses all the obstacles on course, throws some great tricks in between. This is probably our new leader after a couple of runs like this. 
Oh, no doubt about that, Doug. He is just going off. You saw him on the slaughter box getting the transfer. You see him going big there, barely having enough time to get up the ramp. There it is. That's the Indy Glide. I think he might have missed the grab, but man, what a recovery for Parks Bonifay. I don't know that he needs anything huge here to take the lead, but here comes the double up for Bonifay. Just gets a big Indy Glide. He gets the grab on. He didn't quite get the pop that he needed, but overall, a really good impression for Parks Bonifay. Check him out here. Just going huge. When you don't get the uh, the pop that you need off of that, you go to the Indy Clyde, it just makes you look that much higher. You see the full extension there, the grab. Beautiful Parks Bonifay ride. Who is on the dock? Let's talk to him. And you seemed a little bit mad coming into the wake. Were you were you mad at the wake? Well, I went out with the wake last night, actually, till about 3 in the morning. He said something to my girlfriend towards the end. I was just like, you know what? I can settle this now, but I won't tell you that on the water mark. I don't think other, any of the other riders would be able to do anything off the right side of the weight because I put a big dent in it on a couple of tricks. So, I mean, they can try, though. Parks Bonifay, one word, righteous. We'll see if last year's Tour Champion can handle the dented weight left by Parks Bonifay. Aaron Shapiro when we come back. In Arkansas, the great outdoors is always closer than you think. close to your own Arkansas vacation by calling this toll-free number to order a free vacation planning kit today. You know, athletes are pretty well known for their superstitions, but I gotta be honest, our guys can be pretty quirky, too. Have a good show, Kenny. You too. There's this one time Brian had a great show, didn't bathe for 17 days straight. Whereas this year, though, it's been a very different story. The worst had to be when Dan spilled clam chowder, Manhattan clam chowder, all over Reese. Had his best show ever. Of course, that got old for Reese really quickly. Yeah. He's in makeup. Okay. Welcome back to High Point, North Carolina, men's pro wakeboard tour. Doug Dunbar along with Todd Weatherill. And on the water, the man, the myth, the legend. He's won more than any other wakeboarder, Darren Shapiro who is the Inmar Tour Points leader right now, but being challenged by a number of riders. Needs a good performance here today, Todd. Yeah, front side, blind 180. I'll tell you what, he, he is being challenged so much because when everyone's healthy, these guys are all roughly on the same level. Darren Shapiro just takes it one notch above that, and that's why he's won two of the tour stops so far this year. Over the rainbow slider to kind of warm up. Here comes pass one for Darren. Oh, a switch Vulcan. He is way, way past that box, man. Doing a great job. Oh, man. Orbital 360 right there. This guy has got it going on. It's going to be interesting to see is does Darren use the obstacles on course a la Parks Bonifay, who had great success, hitting almost all of them. There he goes over the slaughter box, so he takes the big one. Boy, he sure does. He gets up on top of the ramp, does the transfer, and comes off clean. And there he is on the kicker with a 540. He's off to a great start. And there he's got a tantrum to blind. This is all in one pass, folks. There's the half cab roll. He shoved in like nine tricks to the first pass. One down, one to go. But what a great first pass it was. Man, you just look at the intensity of Darren Shapiro. This guy just goes off. Look at him cut in really hard. He sees the toots right there. He's got it huge. It's out into the flat and he lands it perfectly. Man, what a huge move. Got to be a high-scoring first run, one of two. Here comes pass number two now. Shapiro needs to up the intensity level a little bit. Jason Parks Bonifay. Boy, after that run from Parks, he's going to have to put everything out on the table right now. You notice the huge S bend well out into the flat. So far, he goes around the kicker. Man, I'll tell you what, when it's that big, it just is incredible. Off axis 540. What well, the cool thing about that trick is that Darren just looks away from the boat so well. And then he gets an orbital 540. We haven't seen that all season there, Doug. 
Darren's eyeball into big ramp. Up and over, a blind three, great landing. Shapiro tearing it up. Man, he sure is, Doug. I'll tell you what, he throws so much into one run. Watch this super slow-mo. He comes in so hard for this orbital five. He gets the grab, turns it away. Man, he, he does the blind better than anyone out there facing away from the boat on the landing. Time for the double up for Shapiro in Detroit. We saw the speed ball, which is the double front flip. It'd be nice to see it here. Uh, once again, just doesn't quite get the uh, the pop that was needed there in the world of blind, just getting it out. But I'll tell you what, Darren Shapiro, good overall performance, and I think the judges are going to do him well. Let's see if he has enough for uh, Parks Bonifay. He is about a point shy, Todd. 74-67 for Darren Shapiro. Parks at 75-44. How close was that? Shapiro makes the splash into the dock. We get set for the Sea Doo Slider X competition. The slaughter box you see in front of you, the competitor here, Jerry Nunn. Honestly, not a good day for Jerry. You're about to see why. Entry into the slaughter box, catches the toe of that board, and I'll tell you, it's over. But I, he did okay. He came out of it. He was 100% okay. Yeah, he's got his hands up. He's doing all right. But wait, he caught the nose of the board, it looks Watch like. Watch right there. Yeah, he does. He catches it. He flips to his back. Luckily, he hangs onto the handle, which brings him back to the water, and he's okay. Slaughter box will eat some lunch. Eric Ruck, a little tentative on this one, I think. Looked like the speed was just a little bit less on Rux there. I think he did a better job of entering that slaughter box. Rob Straharik, here's a name we haven't called for a while. He gave his best efforts on the slaughter and got over, but didn't right away. Once again, the infamous slaughter box. Why they name it that? Well, it just eats these guys to death. Now Ryan Wynn gives it his best shot and smooth the turn for Ryan. Very good. So far, I tell you, that kid's doing a good performance today. And Danny Watkins, who ultimately, with this trick over the slaughter box, is our winner in the Sea Dew Slider X. So we finish like this. Danny Watkins, the winner. Ryan Wynn, who is in third place here at the tour stop, got second place in the Slider X. But we mentioned Danny Watkins. He had a fairly good run today, but finished kind of middle of the pack and almost boned with the nose over the slaughter box early. Little sketch. Those guys have been trying nose presses. Watkins looks like he was going for it there, but didn't quite have it. The Pete Rose you saw just a minute ago, front side, front roll. He had a pretty good day, but just not enough. Danny Watkins has a ball, 57-77, his final score on the day. Evan Kennedy on the water as well. Nice to call his name here in High Point. Evan Kennedy, pretty solid performance so far this year, but just not enough to make the finals here. This is his first finals of the year. He's doing a great job. You saw the Whirly, the Pete Rose. Uh, the Whirly 5 was pretty sketch, but he got it. And then I'll tell you what, not a bad performance, though. Gets the Hang On Award for that. Interesting to note, out of both passes, he only hit one obstacle. It was this ride over the slaughter box, successful, and on the day, 61.22 points. Eric Ruck now. This young man had his first tour win a season ago, which took him two years to get in the mix today, but middle of the pack, unfortunately. Now, I tell you what, Ruck last year just had an awesome season. A little bit more pressure now. Oh, man, the huge mute half cab right off the top. That kid loves that grab. Eric Ruck riding big, but not big enough today, unfortunately. As we stand, Parks Bonifay leads at 75-44. Darren Shapiro, you saw, put a great effort out, but second place, Ryan Wynn currently in third. When we come back, Sean Murray, one of two riders left to go here in High Point. Yeah, I didn't want to say anything. Hey, guys. This CD RXDI is running great. How about a splash of gas and I'm out of here? Have you got any kings? Go fish. Hey, are you still mad because we didn't let you drive? Come on, Jimmy, it's my turn to drive. Oh, oh, I'm I'm see you drive. Right on the back, right on the back. It's my turn to drive. That's where you belong, on the back. I want to drive the boat. They just came out with this new flavor, dude. It's pretty sick. That's awesome. Yeah. Actually, I got this, like, mango, like, oh, crazy. Sorry, dude. Heads up. How many times have I told you guys about sitting on cars? Oh, we weren't sitting on it. We were just leaning on it. Call me a liar? No, no. Hey, don't worry about it. It's cool. Are you calling me a liar? No. Your lights are on. Let's break! X Games, presented by Pontiac Aztec, begins August 18th on ABC. Meet Aztec with new Versatrack all-wheel drive. Meet Sam and Kate. They're about to whack some weeds. Go! This is pretty sweet. 
think I see our off-ramp. Next day. Become mango fries. Oh. You got there. The mango. Mangoes? Mm. Mangoes. Do you think I got too many? Go mango! Meet Aztec. Now get $1,000 cash back on any 2001 Aztec or see your local Pontiac dealer for a great lease or financing offer. The 2001 Men's Pro Wakeboard Tour. Big opening trick for Sean Murray. One of two riders to go here in High Point, North Carolina. Sean Murray, Rayleigh to blind. He's been doing that trick for quite some time. Toe side 540. The cool thing about Sean Murray, his style. Watch how he cuts into the wake. This kid is just poetry in motion. Get ready, he's coming up to the slaughter box. He barely survives the experience, but not bad so far for Sean Murray. Murray has one win on the season so far. Back in Detroit, two stops ago. Now I tell you, Crow 540, that is a very technical trick. You see the whirly bird there? He's doing a pretty good job. He liked the ride. Looked like a pretty good groove as he comes back in. Let's get a look at the Rayleigh. Then he pulls it blind, pulls it way out into the flats. The judges love that maneuver. And coming toe side, goes into the Crow, throws the extra half a turn. Oh, he gets the 540. So one down and one to go for Sean Murray. Looking for his second win on the tour this season. Wrapped the KGB. Definitely gets the method grab. He may have been a little sketch on the grab, but man, what a pretty good wrap-up trick that KGB is. And there's the chromo cutting way out. This normally means from Sean that he's going to go huge into a... Oh, he does a hoochie to blind. Man, I'll tell you what, this kid is on fire right now. He is getting some serious amplitude. A lot of big tricks on the water, not a whole lot of obstacles. He makes an effort over the big ramp, tweaks the grab a little bit. He gets the pipe on the right side of that, which normally means he gets a good kick off the top. He gets the grab. He does the Indy Crow right there. And I'll tell you what, Sean Murray has got to get a good score out of this. Watch him cutting in really hard for that KG. There's the method grab. It was a little tickle, not really much of a grab. Get another good look right here. There's the pretty much a hoochie to blind. Look where he's got that handle, man. He's starting to look away from the boat like Darren Shapiro. And then you look at the ramp, he even gets a stylish little method grab coming off the top. There's the two passes. Here comes the double up. Boat's turned 180 degrees. How high will he go? Just a five, I tell you, it was a little sketch. You see him shake his hands there. That has been one tight double up all afternoon. Check him out right here. He gets a pretty decent pop, but coming down, a little bit of a hard one. Watch him shake the hand. Woo! Man, am I glad I made it. Well, unfortunately for Sean Murray, it will not be another tour win. I thought you were gonna douse With me. 69.67 points, that's good enough for third place right now, but he could get bumped out of there. We got one rider to go, and Brett Eisenhower is the man second at almost every tournament he's ever been in in his life. This poor guy needs to get a win. He's going to try his best here in High Point. Man, you are 100% correct, Doug. This guy just puts all the marbles on the oh. table, and that's why right there. Man, Ike just goes bigger than anybody out there, and he's either going to win or he's going to lose. Eisenhower dumps it early. He will get to get back up and ride. Get one free fall from the judges, and that was just a bone out to the face. Now watch this, Doug. Normally, most people will back off right here because they had a terrible first fall. But I'll tell you right now, Ike is not that kind of guy. You'll see him cut to the wake even harder. This kid's going to start going really high now. This guy's going to just start going off because when he's down, he needs it. Well, he plays the percentage game now if he's going to lay it all out in the line and, and push as hard as he can. It could equate to big score. It could equate to another fall, which would take him right back out. Yeah, Doug, that just makes it so much more exciting. You see him there on a big indie tantrum. I'll tell you, the thing that I like about Ike is that you can never tell. If this kid is on, it's the best ride out there. But if he's not on, this guy just continues to go bigger and stronger than most anybody out there. Oh, man. I'll tell you what, this guy... It normally would be backing it off right now, but he is just going off. There's the whirly bird. You notice him, he's got an intense look on his face. He loves the crowd. He loves the excitement of this sport. And I'll tell you what, he adds a lot to the field of play. He's putting together a lot of nice tricks and making his best effort, but with that fall early on in the first pass, it's gonna be 
almost insurmountable to go past Parks Boniface 75 points. That's the realistic part of what we're seeing. Yeah, I tell you what, Doug, a lot of these times when you fall early, it takes you down course too far. You can't get in the same rhythm, regardless if you're going huge or not. It just doesn't look as polished as normal. Helmets off for the double up. He gets a pig off axis three. That was a beautiful trick. And I'll tell you what, man, sometimes it's not about the technical trick. Sometimes it's just about going big. Well, Eisenhower with 60 points. At least he won't be second this tournament. He'll be happy about that, maybe. When we come back, we'll wrap it up. Our winner, Park Spotify. You really only need two things to live. Water. And air. X-Series by Mastercraft. Breathe the big air. Now get the Wall Street Journal delivered for eight weeks at just 38 cents a day of 50% savings. Call 800-454-6500. That's 800-454-6500 for the Wall Street Journal. To you, it's a PC. But to your kids, it's a laboratory, a museum, or a rainforest. The Compact Presario 5000T with Intel Pentium 3 processor. It's a place where your child can explore a world of ideas. And it's just $839. Call 1-800-331-4120 today and get a free compact printer and $50 instant rebate. Hey, why just take your kids to school when you can take them farther than they ever dreamed? Joe, no one saw this coming. Last year, Seattle was the wild card. Now they're on pace to do the unthinkable. Break the 95-year-old record for the most wins in a season. White Sox Mariners, Sunday Night Baseball, presented by Nextel, 8 o'clock Sunday. The 2001 Mastercraft Pro Wakeboard Tour is brought to you by 180 Energy Drink. Turn your energy around. Also by Vans, the worldwide brand of core sports. We welcome you back to High Point, North Carolina. Here's how we finish on the date. Mark Bonifay gets his second tour win this season. Darren Shapiro finishes second. Sean Murray finishes third. Each of these guys has a win, incidentally, on the tour this season. Mark Bonifay takes it to the podium and it was his performance on the water today that was exceptional, Todd. I'll tell you what, man, Parks Bonifay stepping it up. A healthy Parks means a Parks that goes big. Bonifay combining great tricks and the obstacles on course. He's with Todd. Parks back up on the podium again. You got to feel pretty good how the season's going so far. Yeah, it's uh, the last part's been rocking a little bit more. In the first part, I was uh, trying to come back off of a knee injury for the first part, so I was struggling uh, and I was uh, falling in a lot of contests, placing at the bottom, but. Uh, Starting to get used to the format and all the new sliders out here, and I think all the other guys are too because they're riding stepping up. So uh, I'm stoked with it. You know, top three or four, you guys always give props to each other, man. I, I'm glad to see that. But is it, is it tight when it's a race like this and your friends don't win and you do? You feel a little bit weird. It's sort of weird. Like I asked, like Sean and Darren, everybody was sort of talking, like, like what was one, two, three was, and Darren's was the exact opposite of what I thought, and like everybody's was different, and and it didn't turn up being anybody's uh, predicament or prediction. So. I don't know, it was weird and it's, it's really close. It's the closest final I've probably ever been in and some of the hardest riding I've ever seen. So Make it real easy for you riding with the buddies? Yeah, definitely. It's been it's been great riding with uh, like 20 of the same guys for the last six years. So you sort of get accustomed. It's almost like riding at home. Hey, congratulations on your win. Thank you, brother. Great day for Bonifay, and he has blessed us with the 180 energy drink spin of the day off the slaughter box. Terrific performance for Parks Bonifay, and when it comes to tour standings, as we take a look at a little wake skating with Brian Grubb, he does it all without bindings, but with bindings, Parks Bonifay making a move. Darren Shapiro still leading the Inmar tour standings, but Sean Murray in the mix as well. We got a few stops to go here in 2001. Darren Shapiro today bringing back out the Orbital 5 on tour. Great to see that. Sean Murray laid it on the line as well. Came up just a little bit short, but his level of riding on the way up in the midpoint of the season here in 2001. But nobody can get by Parks Bonifay when it comes to the obstacles on course. The master of disaster. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Recognized as the worldwide leader in sports. For more, you can log on to ESPN.com. For Todd Weatherill, I'm Doug Dunbar. Thanks for watching. The Pro Tour rolls on. We we'll look forward to seeing you down the road. So long from High Point, North Carolina.
meeting with the new boss. And I'm late for a tax audit. No kidding. Maybe I shouldn't have deducted my moving expenses last year. I... Well, was your new job at least 50 miles farther from your old home than your old home was from your old job? What? Are you some kind of tax expert? Well, I did take the H&R Block income tax course. You know anything useful about student loans? Well, of course. You know... I'm never sure if I should itemize or not. Oh, it depends on your situation. Hey, how would you like to go out for dinner and a little tax talk? H&R Block can teach you to handle taxes like a pro. Sign up for the H&R Block income tax course today. You don't miss a single deduction, do you? Do you have the number for H&R Block? Well, sure. Oh, fine. Classes start soon in your area. Call now. Hello, H&R Block? Hello? I really need that class. There's a simpler way to save for the things you want. The Orange Savings Account from ING Direct. Everyone gets the same high 4.4% rate. With eight. Office Depot, helping schools take care of business. Welcome to the 7 Up Blind Taste Test. Go ahead, try the other one. This is dishwashing liquid. See? 7 Up tastes better. Like shooting fish in a barrel. Next. Lots coming up here on ESPN News. For those of you on ESPN 2, we will send you to 2001 Pro Water Ski. We will keep you on the, uh, on the land stuff here. We got football, games tonight, baseball. We'll see you. <laughs> ESPN News is a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Welcome, everyone, to Detroit, Michigan. Doug Dunbar along with David Benzel, and it's men's professional water ski jumping, ski flying today. Distance is near 300 feet. Curtis Shears, the Australian, set to get us underway. And as always, Curtis Shears likes to go after that ramp with a vengeance, watch his skis bouncing a little coming into the ramp. You can see the water moving here. He'll attack the ramp, but watch his back at the top of the ramp. See, he never gets it vertical. He's bent over, and that's some of the cautiousness that a jumper feels on his first jump, especially when the water's moving like that. We didn't get all the lift. The boat speed somewhere in the neighborhood of 45 miles an hour. Curtis Shears, 230 feet on that initial attempt. Detroit was a kind stop to him last season. There is Ryan Fitz getting set to go. Ryan, the rookie of the year back in 1999. You'll see him a little bit later, but mentioned about Curtis Shears. Last year, he took a second here in Detroit. Conditions are fairly good today. No reason he couldn't vault to the top of the leaderboard. If he can control his uh, mental focus coming into the base of the ramp and keep the back straight, in spite of the water moving a little bit. A little bit better, he got a quicker snap of the legs. So while the back was still slightly rounded, and that's maybe because of the 70 plus miles an hour he's carrying into the base of the ramp, he manages to get a quicker lift with his legs. Watch the explosive pop right at the top. Boom, right there. Curtis Shears has been a Extremely consistent over the years. Top five finishes every season. He's been on the tour since 1997. Best has been third. And today, he sets the benchmark for the rest of the field. 237 feet for Curtis Shears. And that now is the mark to beat. It's time for the Mastercraft Pro Water Ski Tour today, the 180 Energy Drink Motor City Challenge. It is a sunny, breezy, and somewhat cool day, honestly, here in Detroit, Michigan. Hi, everyone. I'm Doug Dunbar, along with the coach, David Benzel. We are set for our five-man ski fly final. Usually at seven, a little different circumstance today, Dave, because we had a pretty tough qualifying round. In the preliminary rounds, a couple of the men found out that disaster is just on the other side of pressing hard. Scott Ellis and Scott Smith both had big crashes that will keep them out of the finals today. Scott Smith came into the ramp with all this blazing speed, but both tips dropped down as he came off the top. A lot of pull from the boat through that rope as you come in at this speed. 
body, broke forward, and now watch these tips. Boom. They go under so fast because these skis are big. They're like 92 inches long. He's got some of the longest skis in the field. Once the wind gets on top of them and flips them, he, you're gone. There's no recovery. He tucked and rolled, and the safety crew got to him right away. Yeah, the safety crew always hovering just a few feet away. They were right on scene as soon as that happened. And Scotty Smith, one more look. And, and Dave, I would ask you this. On a day like today, we're dealing with fairly nice conditions, a slight breeze, and they're dealing with a little bit of a crosswind. But is that multiplied when those tips drop? When the wind is coming across your skis instead of straight at them, yes, it's more, it's trickier up in the air. And once the tip drops, it's impossible to bring it back because the skis are so big. Well, Scott Smith is done for the day. This is the knee brace that is on Scott Ellis, the rocket man, a decorated jumper in his own right, not jumping in the final here in Detroit, Michigan. And it's also because of some unfortunate luck. But it wasn't on this particular jump, but this was the precursor. Well, you could see there uh, something was going wrong even on that jump. His skis were wavering, the right one almost dropped. Then on this one, oh, and man, did that hurt. He came into the ramp leaning. He was pressing and leaning. And so when he hit the ramp, the skis slid out sideways. Then the wind caught him and flipped him back behind him. And uh, you can see, watch the right and left ski slide out. That's literally on his side. Yeah, he was, he was leaning too much, trying to get to the ramp. Now, going in and doing the splits sideways, that's the worst. And that's why he's got a groin in there. Well, Ellis is dockside, and we finally have a chance to hear from him as to what happened.